turn on your thing and you're connected? I'm on. I'm on. Okay. How's that? Is that? You should hear us now. <laughs> Thank you. Ayo. So, hey, everybody. Welcome to Sunday Tea Book. <laughs> if it's not one thing, it's the other. We went for a little walk just before, so I turned off the mics just before we got there. If you guys could give me oh, a thumbs up if... Uh, yeah, it should be okay now, um, but I'm going to wait for their thumbs up because I did some other audio things. Okay, okay. So, um... Our tech support says... Good to go, good. Oh, great. Thank, thank you. you, thank you, D. Seversfeld. And welcome, guys, to the, uh, welcome to the live cast. Welcome to Sunday Tea Book. Mm -hmm. I see we've got some folks on Instagram coming on in, so welcome to you guys, too. Let's dive right in, all right? Yes, let's do it. So... Sunday Tea Book. For those of you new to Sunday Tea Book, what is it all about? This is a, a weekly thing that Jen and I have been doing. Uh -huh. Episode 10. So we're... Mm -hmm. Inspired get, by you guys. Inspired by you yes. guys to uh, of something we can do that's interesting live. So we're all the way up into episode 10. We take uh, books, articles, and papers that are hard to access, written in Chinese, with no translation or perhaps not so great of a translation, we come on here live and we go through them uh, section by section with you and we do the translation live. So why is this cool is because if you get a great book and it's full of great information, you get the great information. But as I've been working with Jen over the years, I realized that all those million questions I have about why this word and why that word and oh, how do you, and you know, she tell me, oh, this is how we say it in Chinese and this is why. It gives me great insight into the culture behind Chinese tea. tea. He gets a lot of Chinese and uh, language and cultural lessons. And so this is an attempt to get some information from somewhere, a book, paper, or article to you and to share with you all that cultural learning that I've been enjoying. So it's sort of just a big share. So chip in with your comments down below as we go and uh, ask us anything and be as detailed as possible in the questions. That would be cool because we're going to do like pretty big sections. So if it's from a section, you know, tell us which section it's from so we can find it. Mm. And while we translate, we are also going to sip on some tea. What have we got today? You so, always set up the tea, so I never yes, ever quite sure yes. what's going on here. I'm trying to lighten his burden on the whole setup, so I'm now in charge of setting up the teas, so my tech guy can be <laughs> focused on the stuff. And apparently still not still. quite perfect. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to sip some Huang Da Cha. It's Yay. a yellow tea from Anhui province, and uh, it has its own uh, a unique process at the end uh, mm -hmm. called... Uh, it's it a la da hu. It means it's a quite high firing, oh. drying process. So when you taste Later. it, you will have that uh, a little bit roastiness, mm. a little bit. Uh, how would you call that? Mm. Um, th I was gonna just go in a different direction. I was gonna tell right. folks that this is a tea that people, uh, I, I, people coming from the coffee world, I gravitate towards mm. this tea for them. It's a robust. So if you're into fine Chinese tea. Those high-end yellow tea are very delicate, you know, kind of high-end tasting required. Huang Da Cha is a really great sip, very accessible. So you're going to notice the flavor notes, uh, even if you're just getting started. And they're pleasant and wonderful, a robust, great everyday drinker. Uh, that's sort of the direction I was going to take that. Uh, love this tea and people really seem to love this tea. Mm -mm. Mm. It's one of our best sellers. So the book we're continuing today is still the uh, China Tea Book. How much do we go? Okay, we still have some. Yeah, lots <laughs> of book left here. But yeah, China Tea. Yes, the China Tea Book is so talking about the Gaiwan and um, uh, serving pot and some mm. other tea accessories today. And um, uh, it's actually, uh, it's a very good basic book to introduce people to Chinese tea. And the other thing I noticed uh, throughout the uh, the uh, past episode, it also fill in a lot of things that I uh, seem to overlook when talk to people about those uh, um, elements, like uh, talk about, we have episodes about wars, we have episodes mm. about climate, and when we talk about tea wares, it also touches on very basic but quite important right. uh, things for beginners that yes. I personally sometimes just overlook and forgot to mention yeah right mm -hmm. it's not it's it's not people tend to dive right into sort of the quote-unquote high-end things that are required from tea where this one really backs up and says these are the practical things you want to look at and it, going through each piece at a time has been mm -hmm. eye-opening for me too 
So the format of how we're going to approach China Tea today is basically this book is already translated but it's a little bit clunky in spots and for a newcomer to tea or even if you're into tea might be hard to understand. So I'm going to read a section and then uh, I'm going to point out the spots that I found confusing or how I've interpreted confusing spots and then we're going to turn it over to Jen who has read the Chinese side which is very well written and she'll make sure A that we got our understanding right of the translation if not she'll fix it and B that something wasn't just completely missed because that happens every now and then too. Mm. Of course down in the description below for on YouTube you will find a link to the finished translation on our website so you can be sure to check that out and uh, if you love this content be sure to give us a thumbs up uh, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell so that you'll know whenever we go live or post one of our awesome videos about tea travel or tea culture or how to brew or all the different stuff that we make videos about. Yeah. All right. Okay, let's start with so the... for you guys on Instagram, I read along by showing the book on the screen. I cannot do that on Instagram, so I have to sign out now. If you want to follow along, jump over to our YouTube channel, which you'll find up in our uh, in the um, what is that called? Profile, link in profile. Is that what they mm -hmm. say on Instagram? Link in profile. Bio. Link in bio. <laughs> okay, so we'll say bye bye. You'll say bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, and bye bye. <laughs> there we go. I was able to do the title right up front so I don't have to give this a title this time. Nice. Nice. So I can quickly post. I can get over to my remote control. Nice. Now we're rocking here. Mm. All right guys. It's just us and you. Okay. So um, I'm going to show them the leaf there quickly. Okay. Because I can do that now. So here's the... Uh, let me get in I there. Think not too close might be better. Yeah. A little further so you can get the color. Do Try and get some way? right, get yes. some light on it. Oh, there, there we, we go. go. So there's the leaf of Huang Da Cha, and I noticed that Josh is going to go grab some and brew along with us. So that's totally awesome. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we'll come back over here. And I'm gonna get started while you brew, yeah, okay? Absolutely. So I'm gonna bring up the book, guys. And here it is, China Tea. Oh, I gotta grab the. Uh, all right, so the section we're working through is a bit of a longer section and it's an essential tea set for starters right here. This is my really bad highlight hand. And as we promised, we're diving in with our favorite, well, one of our favorite at least, teaware. Gaiwan. The Gaiwan. Covered bowl. So here we go. Covered bowl. Covered bowl is also named Sun Tai Cup. Sanzai, which is sky, earth, and people. The lid is on the top, which reflects, which refers to the sky. The saucer is at the bottom, which refers to the earth. The bowl is in between them, which refers to people. A set is a metaphor of the microcosm, which contains the ancient philosopher's principles, that is, living on the world while raising by people. I'm going to keep going into functions. Functions. Covered bowl is used to brew tea. It is as we see it is it is also can be either used as a tool to make tea or as a personal drinking tool types the material of covered bowl are porcelain sand fired glass and so on among them the multicolored porcelain accounts most selections while selecting the covered bowls we should pay attention to the degree of its reversing the more the radian the easier to be fetched and it is not easy to be scalded while brewing. Generally, more porcelain bowls are used. Usage. Warming up, hold the lower body of the cup. Press the lid with the right hand. Revolve the cup counterclockwise one lap. Reopen the lid. Let the water run through the lid to the tray or water basin. At the same time, turn the lid with the right hand to warm up the cup. Yeah, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> right? Woo, if you're not dizzy, I am. Two, while drinking, move the floating leaves away, then enjoy. There we go. Okay, so that is the covered bowl section. So let's go through it uh, back to the top. Um, so the thing I noticed in the top that was interesting. Mm. Oh, sorry, I'm on the wrong page. I got a little ahead of, my, ahead of myself, sorry. 
So the only thing I, in the first paragraph that I thought was neat was I heard about the metaphor that they're referring to, but I didn't know sun tai is how you like kind of a word. I guess that's three tai. Yes. So what is tai? Veggie? Thai? No, no. <laughs> that's a tai. That's a different tone. Right. Uh, tai. Um... Oh, really roasty. Beautiful nose. Three elements can be ah, a way to translate okay. that, but that's the meaning of that here. And it's not three something. Everybody knows that sky, earth, and people. Uh, by everybody, I mean, uh, just some it, tea people will right. know. That. So this is a tea culture word that even in Chinese isn't going to be like yeah. right at the tip of everybody's tongue. You've yeah. got to kind if of know what's going on. If you talk about the guy one, probably most people would understand. If you say San Tai Bei. Uh, San Tai Cup, right? San Tai Bay in full Chinese that I don't think many people would know. And now with the marketing expanding, they I've seen some version referring to a certain shape of the Tai so mm. That's another twist. Right, okay. Um, Whew, that's yeah. really nice. Okay, but anyway, other than that, I think the first paragraph was really pretty understandable, right? The lid's on top and it, give, it explains the metaphor. Lid, sky, saucer is the ground. So we're ungrounded right now. <laughs> and the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to choose that on purpose just to show. Nowadays, you could have a lot of gaiwan that doesn't even come with saucer mm. or stuff. Right. So, but pretty good. So... And the function, I really found the function was pretty good too, right? Mm. It is used to brew tea and is also used to make tea or as a personal drinking tool, which is maybe a little bit of a shocker to some people. Mm -hmm. It was certainly a shocker to me. We even covered that in a video mm -hmm. um, uh, where I met Mr. Su of Su Gong Cha, the guy who makes the most amazing jasmine green tea with the little white flowers in it that you'll ever taste. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can check that video out. I'll put the link down in the description below. But other than that, I think the function is pretty straightforward. Yeah, we make tea with it yeah. and we can drink tea with it. Yeah. Which I really think that video is the best way to give a mm. visual uh, uh, presentation of how to drink from the cup and how to hold and stuff. Yeah, I agree. It's really much easier with those things to see it live rather than read mm, about it right absolutely. which we're going to get to in a minute <laughs> i saw your eyes go crossed minded too types is uh again types was pretty straightforward you've got porcelain sand fired might be a little bit confusing but what they mean Zisha. there is yeah Zisha. in this book they call all the sand uh, all the Zisha sand fired sand fired yeah which is um if you don't know that it's a little confusing but it's also not that important because as they mentioned later on porcelain is by and large the majority of gaiwan mm. with glass probably coming in second and then Zisha. and the reason for that is you would want something that's not going to interact gaiwan yeah, is versatile. usually yeah gaiwan is, is versatile, quite versatile mm. and you kind of want some non-porous mm material mm -hmm. go with it. and we already covered teapots a while ago which are the more mm. the zisha element more common okay selections so selections was a little bit interesting for sure right right um we have this phrase called degree of its reversing which i think means pouring uh, pay attention to how it pours but i don't know um, and the more radians, so it gets a little... I couldn't do fully understand the English. Yeah, and I think we need some help here. Uh, easy to be I fetched is easy to pick up without burning yourself, but I only yeah. realized that after the next sentence, which said you don't want to get scalded. Right, so it's talking about the curve mm -hmm. on the top of the uh, Gaiwan body, how to the edge, maybe... You want to use oh, this the, one could work. This works, works yeah, pretty good. Just go full size. So the them. body is uh, pretty straight. Again, you will have many different uh, varieties. Oh, yeah. Like some That's pretty the beauty straight. of it. Yeah. But it's this part of this little curve part. How much it, mm. how, how extended oh, the curve. Flare. How much it flares out, oh, we would flare. say probably. Okay, yeah. okay. Flare. Yeah, that's the thing. That would decide how easy to be hold because it's further from the body. So it's a... Mm. That's cool and stuff. In yeah. the video, I think you also talk about the thickness yes. and the Yeah, that stuff. video is really great for Gaiwan uh, understanding and selection and right. stuff like and that. Right, and that also uh, matters when it pours, that easy pour. If it's really mm -hmm. short, mm -hmm. it's very likely to be dripping. 
Right, yes. If this a flare doesn't That's flare, right. And even flare. last week, you even pointed that out. We used the, I think it was last week, we used a, one of our favorite guy ones that we picked oh, yeah, up at yeah, Jing yeah. De and We pointed out how this one, it does have a really slow, beautiful flare. Yeah, yeah. And the pour is just exquisite. Yeah. Okay, so that was the confusing bits there. The more, um, the more radiant, the easier to fetch pick up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then usage. Okay, I saw your head as I read this whole section one. And I think, oh, I got to go back to uh, the book so people see what I'm pointing at. But this whole section one, um, this whole section one was really like, all I wrote for my notes was, huh? Right? I was just, so, right. it, it, like I wanted to try it. Warming up, hold the lower body of the cup, press the lid with the right hand, revolve the cup counterclockwise. I'm picturing this, I don't know, maybe, I don't know what they're talking about at all here, to be honest. Uh, but luckily, I know how to use a guy one. But I really feel like if you didn't, this you... one is talking about the warm up of the guy one. Ah. Oh. So. Uh, oh, warming up. The first two words. Okay. All right. So this is not how to use the guy one. This is how to warm up the guy one. Okay. Um, so. Um, oh, coming back. How should I organize that? I think. Um, at first, I can just uh, give a rough idea of maybe how this book is uh, describing mm -hmm. in the motion, so you will see it right. better. Then, basically, once you have the water in that, you sorry, this is really hot on the bottom. But basically, you hold the guy one, give it a swirl, which means you want the whole um, right, right, the whole body of the guy one warmed up. Then the second part is how to pour the water out. So you can pull that directly out to the table. But what it's suggesting is because when we swirl, oh. the lid wasn't having hot water. Right. It wasn't rinsed and it wasn't quite warmed. So okay. you rather than pour directly onto the tea table, you pour that uh, on the lid, lid right. and rotating so that the whole lid uh, is warmed up. Okay. Right. And uh, on the other hand, you can also try my method, right. which is of course it come from my mom, not myself. Because she has been doing... It's the way I usually do it. Right? Yeah, years mm. of... Uh, 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 like, uh, besides the professional side of the tea, she's also uh, a tea performance master. Mm. And uh, her uh, uh, her way of uh, doing that is putting that uh, like this. Right. Remember, it's warming up so the guy one doesn't have yeah, leaf in it at There's this no point. leaf. So you put in the water, so the water will sit on the top. And I'll go you to the use table for the, this. Oh, cool. About that. Okay. And you can use the, the you know, the needle. So that there's comes, water all over that. Right. Imagine mm. there's water all over that. And you, when you use the needle that comes with the tea tool or mm. anything that help you till that. So the water will drain down. Right. In which case the lid is also rinsed as well. And yeah, flip and over. nice and warm. Yeah. Mm. So the lid is rinsed, the tea, uh, the guy one is rinsed as well. Right. And then go discard to the table. Mm. Cool. Cool. Okay. So that's great. So that clears up section one. And again, you can get our full translation down in the description below. We'll have mm -hmm. that up shortly after the video is over. And then, uh, so for use it, so that's great. You, um, it's pretty, pretty much a way to warm up a guy one. That's why I also, why I didn't recognize it because I use your, your mom and your method mm. more commonly. Um, and then finally in section two, um, the only thing I felt like was a little bit missing from there is while drinking, uh, move the floating leaves away with the lid, right? It doesn't really yeah, tell you yeah. straight up to like, it you just give it a little... It says that in Chinese, but it's missing it. Yeah. But in so... terms of how to use a uh, guy one, I really think we have an excellent yeah, that's what video I felt. of drinking and brewing. So here. yeah. Otherwise, it's out. <laughs> drinking and brewing. So be sure to check out that video if you want to use the guy one for drinking. It's awesome for green tea as well mm. as uh, sanded uh, mm -hmm. uh, green ish tea. Yeah, right on. Mm. All right, so uh, uh, let's go off to comments here. I saw there was a couple of comments, maybe questions. Right. Can I just insert a little thing? Oh. It's slightly like a. No. <laughs> it's slightly not tea related so i didn't want to break the flow mm. and uh it's just the other it's a little bit of translation thing when people talk about the sky earth and uh, uh people mm. uh it's very 
uh, specific. When we listen to that, is the sky is that blue sky over us and the mm -hmm. earth? It's just in Chinese. In Chinese, the sky it could mean when we say literally the word sky, Tian, it can mean uh, the universe, or you can mean the heavenly, or even God oh. or stuff. The way the way we use the word sky, Tian, is more than sky but i feel like in western cultural sky is quite literal sky. It, yeah 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 it's much more limited we lose that we lose that spirit <coughs> sorry it's okay i think i sneeze right on the mic sorry guys spike all their all their speakers I are blown. do this next time mm, it's okay um next time i'll reach for the mute button super fast Sorry. Um, yeah, but you're right. Really Sky right. is pretty literal. We don't think of it as we would. I think the mm. better translation would be heavens, the heavens, which right. includes the sky and kind right. of anything else, whatever people believe might be up in the heavens, spirits would be, or whatever. Would that be too religious? Uh, the heavens is less religious than heaven. Oh, okay. Somehow. I don't know. But it, but it does. It does. It can't not be spiritual mm. because the Chinese word captures that spiritual aspect of sky. That's our sky word, but leaves out. Uh, right. It covers uh, those. Those kung fu I'm, gods are there in Tian. Right. right. And also, it has. I like uh, sometimes. Kung fu. I, I worked use, it in. <laughs> sometimes I like to use the universe rather than heaven because i thought heaven was having that implication and universe is sometimes for us as when we talk about tian like it has that uh, universe works in its own way kind of feeling. right right the so, trouble with universe for me is the universe is the earth under your feet too it's right, right. too it's encompassing all, mm. everything okay okay that's cool and it's it becomes pretty you know astronaut astronomical Okay, okay. In English, okay. like suddenly it's Carl Sagan might break out a guy one and say billions and billions of tea leaves or something. <laughs> anyway, for those of you who know and love Carl Sagan, shout out, brother. All right. Um, so we'll bring back the book. Oh, no, we were going to questions. Good, good interject, though. That was perfect. Because yeah. um, that was missed in the English again because okay. of the nature of the word sky. Because of the translation, sometimes it couldn't really. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, there's different ways we l are able to look at words in the languages. Right. So, um, I thought so. Uh, Josh said, "Yeah, I thought Thai was vegetable too." Ha ha. <laughs> thai is vegetable. This is uh, San Thai. San Thai. San Thai. Mm. San Thai. Mm -hmm. Good. So it's uh, C A I two for those pinyin lovers out there, mm. um, not C A I four, which is veggie. Um, like uh, Xian Cai. Mm, I just harvested those the other day. Check out our Instagram story <laughs> for my sitting down and plugging leaves. I was just bored. Uh, Jiu Cai. Mm, oh, good. I love those veggies. I'm getting hungry reading that. Also, never heard this sky, earth, people metaphor before. Cool. Well, I'm glad you learned something. That's cool. Very cool. And I've also, I've been inspired to drink from a guy one. Very mm, good. Yeah. Nice. And Joseph, hey Joseph Burton, welcome. Been a while since I've been able yeah. to make the live stream. How have you guys been? We're rocking and rolling here. Thanks for asking. Things are good. It's getting cool, <laughs> as you know. Getting cool outside. Brr. Autumn is coming. Yeah. It's okay. I have another set of headphones. Ah, he blew his headphones out. That's why you were laughing. All right, put on your other headphones. We're moving on. All right. So T set. It's in ancient times. Okay, this is the tea knowledge about tea section. A little. So this was. This is interesting. Tea sets in ancient times. The concepts are different about tea sets since ancient times to now. What we call tea set refers to the equipment for drinking tea, such as teapots, teacups, etc. While in ancient times, the concept of tea set contained tea making, holding, baking, and the sets. Uh, that related to drinking and even tea house. There are many tea sets presented in the ancient books, such as tea tripod, tea cup, tea grinding, tea roll, tea constitution, eh? tea cupboard, tea extract, tea groove, what? Mm -hmm. tea cage, tea basket, tea board, <laughs> etc. In Book of Tea has referred 24 kinds. Okay, I want to cover this section. Two, like, and then we'll go on to the next one. So, 
Para One, not bad. Uh, my gist of mm. Para One is in ancient times, the term tea set it's covered more, way more stuff. It was more encompassing. It's a very stick to the word ju. So tea set in Chinese we call cha ju. Ju means the tool to do something. So it literally means you know the tool of tea, which includes how you make it, everything okay. related to that. Okay. It's a very uh, broad. Broad, but very true to the meaning of this ju. word ju. Okay. While if you think about uh, today's, we talk tool. about the cha ju. It's really mm. literal of a tea drinking tool, mm. not really like tea tool. Yes. Right. So it's narrower to this implication. Which is probably why we changed to tea set, mm. right? We don't really tea tools. I only think of the little set that right. goes in the corner sometimes, like the needle we refer to. Oh, right, when right, we okay. say tea tools in the context of brewing, I rarely think of a rolling machine, or a or a. That's the English. That's why you mm. can translate that as tea sets or tea wares or tea vessels. Tea ware works. Yeah, that's very right, specific. Right. Mm. But uh, just say the Chinese word itself, ju. Like the same word but different meanings. Right. And uh, now I want to get into paragraph two. This is so fun. I have so many questions because <laughs> first, what the? So basically, they just talk about them. What mm. is a tea tripod? I have to know. <laughs> what is a tea tripod? Tell me now. Uh, it's not a Tell tripod. A, ah, so, darn. So. Does tripod literally mean it has to be like camera yeah, tripod? Yeah, this thing here holding That's up it, our right? camera. So it doesn't have to be camera, but it can be uh, anything that has. It means three legs. It, yes, the what, the or, the Chinese one is the three legs uh, vessel. We have a word oh. ding is uh, that ding has a three legs, and uh, with a vessel in it. Ancient times were for uh, putting uh, uh, liquid. Okay, so basically like this or guy, but would stuff. have a one, two, three little feet. Mm -hmm. mm. Sometimes you will see those designs you do, you do, in yeah. either cups mm. or uh, teapot. You would mm. have like three Ding. legs. We don't have four legs or two legs, three legs. Two legs would be problematic. Mm. Mm, sure. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, so tea tripod is just a vessel we even have a word with called, three legs. Mm. Mm. Ding li. Three legs Ding. is that vessel and a Means it stay still. It's in this situation describing uh, the balance of power or something. Okay. Imagine balanced. It means that it's not going to tip over, basically. Yes. Right. So teacup is easy. Tea grinding. I think if we know a bit of tea history, that's not surprising, right? Because right. back in the Luyu time, uh, it was powdered, right? Yes. Powdered and prepared. You have a lot of of the. Uh, so first, uh, these words all comes from uh, the. Uh, uh, classic of tea by Lu Yu. So, and you will have, a, and most of them are not quite used nowadays because right. how we have tea right. are different. Right. And like modern times, when we con in contact with the tea words, they're mostly tea drinking words. It's mm -hmm. the phase when we do tea and drink. While the old times, those tea, uh, uh, in the, especially in this paragraph, is emphasizing tea preparation tools. A lot of them, uh -huh. the holding the teas, uh, how to grind the teas. Mm -hmm. You know the bowl mm -hmm. and the grinder mm -hmm. and the cutter and the mixer and the stuff is right. It's a slightly pre this pace um, sure. and sure. Well, stuff. So at least slightly, right? Mm. So I think maybe well, the way we'll approach it, because I think I'm super interested in all I of these. I didn't even translate this. All of these cool words, I am going to force her to um, translate these, but I'm going to include the words in the translation because I think they're interesting to people like cha this, mm -hmm. cha that, and in context of just for the tea nerds out there. Mm -hmm. um, I won't name names, Josh, <clears throat> but um, some people might be interested <laughs> in that and um, probably Joseph Burton too a lot based on his translation work. He might like those things. So I'm looking out for you guys. Okay. Tea brothers. Mm -hmm. Let's have a sip. Mm -hmm. I think I nailed the amount. It become the liquor become really thick. I like that. Mm, it's really nice. I like how the the liquor texture when I pour mm -hmm. it. The roastiness is really um really wonderful in this tea. The uh, the tea leaf itself, the aroma of the tea leaf, is one of the big attracting features. Very chocolatey. Um, roasty chocolatey tea leaf aroma 
and the liquor is um, unlike a, a maybe a rock tea where the chocolatey will sometimes work its way into the liquor. I find the chocolatiness takes a back page in the, in the liquor flavor, and we get this warming. Yes, we get this warming, Josh roasty, warming. roasty, grainy thing. Oh, Josh yeah, is that, having it. That's the feeling. That really have the autumn, yeah. mm, autumn, great warming autumn tea. thing. Mm. I want to go like a trail walk and to bring this tea. Mm. Oh, let's do that. Mm. Maybe we'll try a live on the trail. Do we have the signal? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gatineau Park is covered in signal. Oh, mm -hmm. cool. I think. Anyway, no promises. Okay, guys, I'm not 100% sure of that. So that's that section. Let's quickly clean up the comments here. Mm -hmm. uh, I have another set of headphones. Oh, right. We broke your headphones. Haha. <laughs> no, just kidding. Okay, I understand literally zero about the tea sets in ancient times section. Haha. <laughs> yeah, me too. So I'll uh, also, I finally got my first infusion of the Huang Da Cha. Look, took a while to set up and boil the kettle. Yeah. And the tea tools. I love the flavor of this tea. Oh, I'm so glad you like mm. it. Thank you. So warm and nutty, roasty, and kind of. And almost a vanilla. Uh, sorry, you What's sent a vodka? comment. Hang on, I got a, I got lost because he sent comments. Right, so warming, nutty, roasty, and almost a vanilla tonka, tonka bean, bean sweetness kind of note. Even roasted soybeans too. So delicious. Have you guys mm. had those roasted soybean snacks? Oh boy, those resem the resemblance is uncanny. So you do those fried. I call them yellow peanuts. Right, because you do those. Is that that's fried soybean? I'm right? not sure. Roasted soybean snacks, Chinese snacks. I don't get a good English translation. Sometimes mm. I get them crisscrossed. Right, but anyway, I'm just. But yeah, yeah, but. Uh, and yes, it does have that mm. just really warming, nutty, roasty, oh. like like a blanket, you know. Yeah, it does have that. Anyway, I might steal some of your descriptors for our, our description on the website, if you don't mind, Josh. I like some of your notes there. Have you guys had those? Mm. So I'm going to... You, you I'm just reading. I'm thinking okay. about the tasting I'm gonna go back. feeling it. Right on. So I'm going to go to the next section, guys. Rock and roll. Mm. The fair cup. Here we are. So again, I'm going to read through this whole section, then we'll come back to it. Um, as we get into these tools, though, you'll see things are getting more straightforward. Fair cup. Fair cup is also named tea pitcher. It has been used since 1970s. Dividing tea with a fair cup, there is the same quantity water in every cup to represent that treat everyone the same and honestly. So it is called fair cup. Amen. Huh. Functions. Fair cup is used to hold the well-brewed tea, then pour the soup into each cup. It can make the tea soup completely the same on density and taste, whereas settle the residue. Types. The materials of the commonly used fair cups are porcelain, sandfire, glass. Among them, porcelain and glass fair cups are most used. Some cups have stems, while others do not. Some with a filter net, but most cups do not have. Usage. One. In order to avoid the long time soaking, which causes the tea soup too bitter and strong, it is better to pour the soup into the fair cup as soon as the tea is brewed. Divide it at any time to make sure the taste is the same within each brewing. Two, the capacity of the fair cup and pots or cover bowl should be matched. Generally, the fair cup should be larger than them. All right, I'm gonna go back up to the top here and we'll go over this. So as you can, as you heard, right? It's I found this section was pretty straightforward. Um, I think they were pretty. Yeah, cool yeah. thing here though for me was mm -hmm. I didn't know it was so young. Me and the fair cup are pretty close in age, <laughs> so that's cool. Only about fifty year old device. So was it all like a Chenzhou style before that, or uh, is, it, is it a out of yes, mm -hmm. yes, old times like a. I think what you point out is a good, good point in terms of a lot of the things because people yeah. keep saying this is how Chinese brew tea traditional a tea table is really young too. Mm. It just decades older than fair fair, fair cup, cup sharing pot sharing, sharing pot. pot. It's a lot of things are not as old. 
right? As people think, people I, are thinking those are thousand years old. Like yeah, always drinking no. because it's so pretty and and elegant and whatnot, and from such a different culture. I really, I totally, right. I'm busted on that too. I right. I thought the whole ceremony was ancient. No, and no. only as we got into it, I found out a lot of this this ceremonies, the whole ceremony, like just yeah, look at Lu Yu. Performance the whole, uh, first, uh, the ceremony for what we're talking about. A lot of people are thinking about the tea performance, which is really young since mm. the night. Mm. really formed. Uh, another thing that is really young is that uh, smelling cup, the Ulo smelling right, cup. Right, right. Because it's a part of performance and sometimes, because <laughs> people like to have ancient or traditional or something right. as the way because it's China, so it must right, be right. really old. It bumps up the sort of how classy it is yeah, too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's interesting. And isn't like there's a relationship to ancient Chinese tea ceremony. I think you can look at Japanese tea ceremony. Is that accurate, or that's uh, kind of captures well, a lot? Pretty of, captures mm. the Song Dynasty ones. Right, right. So it's a, a some like we were talking about that a lot. Talking about the China and ancient, it really have different period. Right. Three hundred years ago is quite different than five hundred years ago. Right. Yes. Seven hundred years right. ago. Yeah. Cool. All right. So that was the so the seventies was just cool. It wasn't really a confusing, and I think it's pretty. Uh, it's all pretty understandable. We're using it to divide the tea up mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. to get everybody the same amount. Mm -hmm. In function, they kind of bring out a couple other important functions that are perhaps a little bit more subtle, but uh, very important. And that is um, you don't think about this. You don't think about consciously, this consciously, but when you once you reflect do the, on that, you realize, oh. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and one, once I had that three set with no sharing pot, I realized, wow, it's harder to make the all the cups taste the same. So one of the that's functions... That's a skill test. Yes, yes. That's so, a skill test to make sure they're the same color. Same the color same. and same depth. Yes. Really yes. tricky. If you learn uh, Chaoshan Gong Fu style of pouring, it's directly from Gai Wan to cups. Three little, we call that a ping pong size cup. Mm. Ping pong ball cup. Size mm -hmm. and make sure they're even mm -hmm. and same depth, same color. Yeah. Actually, depth affects the color too. That's right. Yeah. So it's and so that's tricky. So the sharing pot makes that much easier. You just put your infusion in here when it's perfect, and it's going to mix in the sharing pot, and then everybody's going to get the same one. Mm. And also the residue will drop. So it makes if you do a delicate yeah. pour, you can keep the leaves out of people's glasses. Yeah. So pretty straightforward, but very interesting. Mm -hmm. And I think well described there pretty much. Mm -hmm. I like uh, very like the last point of how to use it to mention that uh, uh, we choose a serving pot larger than yes. the gaiwan and a teapot. Yeah. A lot of times we choose <laughs> them because we like them, but uh, this is actually very... Very practical. Yes. And you'll never make the mistake twice. I've done that before. Yes. You get a big, big teapot like a yeasting teapot we have a pretty big one for puar i got a mini little uh sharing pot and pour that yeah, in and yeah. zzz, right over the edge yeah. one infusion and the rest of it i think we can just keep going from there because mm -hmm. all the rest of it was quite um you know very easy to understand mm. so we'll um let's keep rolling a bit we'll come back for questions in a bit what do you think i'm not sure do we have oh wait we have a few right um Rose on so Oh, let Basically, me come back to this. A roasted and lightly salted soil bean without the husk, they become come flavor too. Mm. I think I know what you're saying. Plain and with salt. Yeah. And that's the flavor he's getting here. Plain mm. with salt. Also, I see what you mean. There is definitely a cacao kind of aroma, especially in uh, in the empty uh, Gaodong Bay mm. sharing pot. Gong Dao Bay. Gong Dao Bei, yeah, I don't see it too well. Thank you. I'm a very strict teacher. <laughs> no, she's good. Kind of like smelling a jar of very high quality semi dark hot chocolate powder. Mm. Oh. Haha, and thanks. I'm honored that I can make the cup for the tasting notes. Oh, of course. Yeah, I certainly agree. It's very beneficial to really listen to like uh, how you describe that mm. and stuff. Those are words I would never think of. And yep. when you say it, when I really trying to. So I, I see what you're trying to describe and yeah, that's yeah. very I, valuable. That's my favorite thing about tasting notes is sharing them between people. You hear other people's take and it really expands your mind a bit. So finally, yeah, I certainly agree. It took me a few years to master the Chaozhou style pot to cups, uh, especially for Dan Song. 
or running technique, but I think I got the hang of it now. Good job, uh -huh. good job. All right, so back over to the book. And filter. Mm -hmm. All right, so getting down to the nitty gritty pieces of the set now. Mm. Filter, it is also called funnel or strainer. Although it is small, it plays an important role during brewing. Functions, being at the upper part of the fair cup while brewing to leach the residue. Types, the materials of fair cups are stainless steel, porcelain, pottery, bamboo, wood, and gourd ladle, etc. Filter is made of stainless steel, fine net, cotton net, fiber net, etc. Usage, it should be cleaned just after being used. Uh, and that's about it for filter. And honestly, I think the whole section was gold. Mm. Uh, it's a filter. Mm -hmm. So it's not, there's not, um, it, like it says, important, um, but not overly complicated to explain. And I think we got all the gist of it here. My favorite mm -hmm. filter, no, not favorite, because I hardly ever use it, but my most, what I think is the most high-end filter I ever saw was those leaf. We have ones that are just oh, a leaf, right, right. but all yeah. the leaf is gone. It's kind of out and only the veins of the leaf remain yes, and it has a really yes. fine mesh vein and yes. it works as a filter super cool yes but not very durable <laughs> not durable no they wear out a little quicker yeah uh, personally i like the stainless steel so easy to clean yeah anything that is yeah. easy to clean but i just want to mention one thing though i found that with a really good guy one it's filter is really optional when i started mm. i was a really a heavy filter guy mm. Because uh, that would make it easy to pour. Because yes. I don't have good control with that. Sure. When I get better, I have good control. Then when I come across a really good guy one with an exquisite pour, I realize I have really good control. Even those little mm. leaves, teas that I usually would use. A, right, like black or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I, would, I didn't need filter. Yeah, mm. I think we mentioned that about the uh, one we used last week too. That's it it has a very. That's the one that made me realize that yeah. a good guy one can. You can position the lid just so so that so the, precise. Mm, the stream and comes out gorgeous, yes, but none of the leaf come out. Doesn't uh, never give me a trouble of a uh, uh, slip. You know, sometimes you would uh, tilt it like uh, this big, right, and you right. you put that in your pour 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 suddenly it becomes deeper. Right. Or no. Something. No. It stays. No. Stay, be that because the fit is so good, mm. uh, like the ring fit. All right, so cruising right along here. Mm. <laughs> this is a cute. I'm going to get rid of us for this. This is okay. the tea towel, mm. the modest but important tea towel. So I'll read through it. Tea towel. It is also called tea cloth. Functions. It is used to clean up water stains and tea stains, especially those in the side and bottom of the pot or cups. Types. The materials are mainly cotton and linen cloth. Selection. Select one that have a good quality in absorbent cotton linen. Usage. Two methods for fold the tea towels. One, divide the towel into three parts and fold it inward separately, then divide it into four parts and repeat the above procedure. Method two, divide the towel into three parts firstly, fold inward separately, then divide into three parts and repeat the above procedure. Two, tea towels can only clean tea, mm, can't quite see that, tea sets. Moreover, the sets are for drinking, right? Beside this, the water stains or peels cannot be cleaned by tea towels. All right, so again, uh, this is by and large perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. um, again, I think, although we don't have a video on folding the tea towel, <laughs> and let me come back to us a bit. Although we don't have a video on folding tea towel and may never have one because <laughs> I think it's a little bit, you know, for Key me. Key performance would yeah, care about this more. Yeah, than... we fold ours kind of however we want and they look cute. Right. Um, it's good to be tidy, but I think I didn't really understand the folding methods, but, uh, but there are some pictures there. So if you're really, yeah, really into maybe it, show the pictures. Yeah, coming up, but basically again, you have different size, right? You divide that into three part. That's about three. Oh, 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 oh. You, yo, yo, yo. Just, I better just watch myself. Just I feel watch it. Don't screen. look at the screen okay. and it'll throw your ring yeah, off. Yeah. So that's considering three. Yep. Right. Then divide this into four, and like you fold a blanket, two fold blanket, mm -hmm. kind of in the middle. 
And then and again dunk. in the middle. This is a one way. Cute. So cute. It's, right? Yeah. And I, I think that's the important part about just the ceremony is cute neat. and neat. Mm. <laughs> so I think the one thing I think it's we a lot of times we don't talk about uh, is is the use of a tea towel. Of course, you want to absorb mm. because we're wiping water, but we don't wipe on the tea table water and stuff. The tea towel is actually quite exclusive to tea vessels. Mm. Yeah, sometimes we have water mm. out, we wipe it, it's okay, but it's not for wiping the ta tea table or anything. Mm. It's for wiping the uh, like a tea teapot or, tea pot or serving pot. Sometimes the table is wet, you wipe that. So mm. it's literally just wipe with tea, very related liquor, tea or pure water. Right, right. And you wipe the outside of your cup. If you put that on the tea table, the the bottom is wet, you wipe it. Yeah, basically you're gonna, your guest is gonna pick up that cup and you're trying mm. to prevent that from dripping on their lap yeah. as they drink, right? Mm. And another thing is for teapot. Mm -hmm. Many people buy teapot right. and start to touch that with hands and stuff. Uh, actually, the initial one, when you first uh, started to cultivate or raise, like in Chinese, yang, a teapot, the first step is almost like a polish it with tea towel. Right. If you're working on the patina of your of mm. your new yeasting teapot, yes. you want to buff it with your tea towel after yes. you give it a hot rinse. Yes, right? yes. Mm. And later on, once the teapot the clay till a certain phase to ready to uh, absorb your your natural oil, oil. yeah mm. or stuff you play that with clean hands again not like other real oil you want to clean hands but mm -hmm. it just have a gentle human oil yeah, it's just on a, that, I think. a delicate touch yeah mm. yeah so let's take it out to the comments okay see what's going on over there um see what you mean there, there, here we go there rubbing a lot of flavor oh the leaf ones yeah, yeah. So, so Josh says, yeah, those uh, desiccated leaf filters are the coolest. For me, I used to use very fine filters and, and value no leaf debris. And value no leaf debris in the pot. But as I learned more, I realized ultra fine filters were mm -hmm. robbing a lot of flavor and especially mouthfeel. So I use a ceramic filter funnel that I retrofitted. Oh, good job that I retrofitted myself with a very coarse stainless mesh that mm. lets the body through but catches big the big pieces. Yeah, like green tea, I don't like to use a filter. Mm. Almost all filter like you buy from the market is, a, is too fine for those fuzz. Right. It would eventually you can see, them. Up, uh, you can the see them get caught and that's sad because yeah. that's yeah. delicious. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of tone is that? Uh, tone four. No. It was a custom tone. I discovered that that while drinking, uh, I discovered that while drinking what was purported as a top shelf by Mudan, but it had such a thin body. Then I noticed that there were no trichomes in the brew, so I tried unfiltered. Then it was amazing. Nice fold for the towel. I'll try that. I usually fold lengthwise in thirds, then roll that tightly into a towel burrito. Haha. <laughs> the extra layers help to be. Uh, help to be very absorbent and then Josh says oh with a bunch of explanations. Oh, sorry about your ear You polish the pot with the towel. I always did the polishing with my tea brush a kind of like a shorter haired and wider Chinese calligraphy brush mm. Mm. And Joseph Burton says I use a stainless steel filter with Gaiwan, but not much anymore I mostly use just for guests now who don't drink loose tea and don't care for the debris at the bottom. Mm, mm. And D. Seversfield says, does the brush really polish the pot? Mm. Okay, that was uh, one question. What does polish mean? Mm. Here, uh, just the reason I asked that is the brush, uh, polish, I use the word because I thought the word has the, a little bit, uh, like uh, in terms of the movement, it has a certain strength in it. Mm -hmm. Like a, a brush, you cannot really press on it. Mm. So like to give the 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 yep. a little 
I think you're it's right. It's really brush How over I use it. the cloth is polish, right? Because I'm right. actually holding that carefully and exerting some amount of force. Yes. I'm not crushing force, right, but, right. but not just gently, gently rubbing it. Yes. I'm giving it a pretty deep like mm. work. Yes. Right. I feel um, like the brush I will use when you have deep, like almost like a, just like how you paint it with the even color to give it a chance to absorb mm. things. Right. Rather than polish. That's mm. how I look at it. So yeah, the answer is yes, we use the tea towel to do the polishing. Tea pets mm. too. Mm. Um, we go back, like anything yeasting uh, that needs a little polish, we'll give that a polish with a tea towel mm. after we give it a bath with super hot water. Right. which is not super hot it's just boiling mm. oh really good still really great uh, that nutty grainy I want roasted roasty. chestnut yeah yeah we're gonna have roasted chestnuts after this mm. um, and Josh says I mean I thought it was a law a, a lol I mean I thought it was a lol but uh, Tawa would likely do a better job I was always very rough with my brush, pressing very hard to get the result. It was really meant to brush the young, the cha pan. Mm. Mm. I'll absolutely try it. Yeah, get a nice clean one. Yeah, uh, I reserve one just for doing that. Mm. And I have a bunch of other to wipe. Yeah, cool. All right, so I think that wraps it up. I think we have covered, uh, we've, done a, we've made some great headway into China tea. Um, I was telling Jen before this episode, I absolutely love Sundays now. I'm yeah. super stoked to uh, to come and hang out with you guys and go over the book. And I have that one hour before panic. Then when we started, <laughs> I get really excited. The mm. one hour before is just like I'm about to enter a test that kind of all oh, don't happen yet. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm uh, I'm too busy setting up, and uh, I will get better, guys. Next time, then we'll be sound mm. right away. But anyway, that about wraps it up. Um, if you guys like the content, please give us a thumbs up. Let me move my thumb to where it can be seen. <laughs> please give us a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel click that mm -hmm. notification bell so you'll know whenever we post a new video mm -hmm. if um, you like the content today be sure to give us a, a like you said that right I you did. said that yeah, yeah. oh my god but I was gonna throw in if you're really into uh, if you really want to support the channel all of those things really support our channel and yes. allow us to bring you great content but if you want to support the channel and support your tea habit head on over to our website uh, and check out all the different great teas we have. Pick yourself up some tea. Mm -hmm. um, we've got the next few episodes all mapped out what tea we're going to have. So if you want to grab those ones, you can grab them and have them brew along with us, just like Josh did today. That was so nice of you, Josh. Thank you. Mm. And uh, until next it's time. It's great to share the oh, yeah. tasting notes. I really oh, love yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Really love that. Yes. Really love that. Mm. So that's why you all got to do that. So we can get more tasting notes from you all. No, sorry. From y'all. Y'all. I said it right. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. So until next time. Keep steeping. Keep steeping.